What's up Zoms? Today we are going to examine the OG, the survival horror god, the start of one of the most incredible franchises in video game history. Easter eggs, secret enemies, little known weapons, and so many other cool things. This is WB's ultimate guide of RE Easter eggs, secrets, and stories from the original Resident Evil 1. Resident One of the reasons I rented Resident Evil at Blockbuster back in 1996 is because the cover was awesome. But after playing the game and looking back at the box, I was kinda like... What is this? I mean, the guy on the box doesn't look like the main character from the game. <laughs> Stop it. The artist himself was tracked down and he says he actually designed this before the game. So it isn't a character from the game, just roughly based on one probably an early description of Chris. Really? But wait one minute. There's actually an original, original version of the cover, and bro, that's Sylvester Stallone. Find Rico. The artist claims that it doesn't have anything to do with any famous actors. But we'll let you make the call. Let me know in the comments what you think. There should be a law against bringing up Sylvester Stallone again. I am the law! But these scenes from 1995's Judge Dredd are eerily similar to the ending of 1996's RE1. And this movie, Daylight, came out after Resident Evil, but at this point Stallone has just become Redfield. I'm Redfield. I mean, can we at least get some Arnold inspiration? Ah, thanks. Speaking of movies, while the creator of Resident Evil specifically mentions horror movies like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre as some of the horror influences, we couldn't help but notice some inspiration from other top suspense directors. In this room, silence becomes fear, <laughs> until one false move leads to chaos and horror, which was influenced by Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. And in this room, a first-person view draws up fear and suspense as you're almost frozen in place as a mysterious creature attacks, a scene very similar to the shark reveal in Steven Spielberg's Jaws. And of course there's a reason they went with typewriters as the save function, and that's because of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. There are also other horror influences throughout the game. Let us know in the comments your favorites. There are a couple secret cutscenes in the beginning of the game. When you're playing as Jill, she'll follow Barry into the dining room. And normally you'll just walk on over and talk about Chris's blood. Hope this is not Chris's blood. But if you ignore the natural flow of the game and try and exit the dining room, Wesker has a message for you. Investigate if you hear any gunfire. It automatically puts you back in the dining room. But if you try it again... Lost courage already? It's not like you. Now, if you talk to Barry, he'll do his normal thing. But if you run over by the clock... Who is it? Hey, you! Stop! Run, Jill! He's insane! What the hell? Let's report this to Wesker! The first zombie doesn't wait for you to find him, and you lose the iconic initial CG scene. Plus, you'll notice when you enter the next room that Kenneth's legs have fully been eaten, and all his ammo is missing. But the rumor is that when you do this, it makes the game easier. Let me know in the comments if anyone's tested to see if that easy mode is true. Remember this scene where Barry saves Jill from being crushed? Hurry! This way! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. Well, originally this guy, 
a huge comic book style character named Gelzer was supposed to hold up the ceiling with his power like a superhero and save her. The other character cut late in development was Dewey. He was supposed to provide some intentional comic relief to the game. In the end, Gelzer was cut and turned into Barry, a more realistic character. And the comedic character Dewey was also cut. But lucky for us, Barry became unintentional comedy. Yeah. Whoa. I'm really embarrassed. Hope this is not Chris's blood. Just a moment. I can't believe. What the hell is this place anyway? It's really powerful, especially against living things. It looks like he was killed by a crow or something. Just, just leave me. Go, go quickly. A double win. These two cuts and Barry seem to have saved us and made the game more realistic and cinematic and less cartoony slash gamey, which was a huge influence on making survival horror stick. Alternative costumes and the closet key, one of my favorite parts growing up that became a staple of the Resident Evil series. You probably know the two outfits from when you played. There's Chris in his Maiden Heaven leather jacket and Jill with her short hair and crop top. But did you know that other versions of the game added additional costumes? In the PC version of the game, Chris sports a different type of bomber jacket, while Jill adds Daisy Dukes with leggings. Saturn went a more traditional route, with Chris in his star's tactical gear and Jill in a cool, slightly more chic look. When Director's Cut came out, they put Chris in a more casual army style outfit and Jill got some kind of southern cowboy cartoon cop look. Even Rebecca was changed in this one to an alternate red booty shorts outfit. But Barry remained the same. Just a moment. Finally, in the DS Deadly Silence version, they went three very different crazy routes. Chris was covered from head to toe in ninja garb, while Jill bared it all as a stripper cop. And of course, Rebecca became a cheerleader. Is that you, Rebecca? Which alternate costume in RE1 is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Speaking of alternate costumes, we have to mention the Redfield family's favorite slogan, which started with Chris in RE1, but was used throughout the series and by his sister Claire. Made in heaven. This is actually a tribute to the rock band Queen and Freddie Mercury, who had died just a few years earlier. The band's final album came out one year before the game and was itself a tribute to Mercury. The title of both the album and a hit single on it were Made in Heaven. Made in heaven. This is also a good time to posit another theory that the PC alternate costumes jacket message, Brave Bomber, is a reference to a Japanese metal band that was popular in the 90s called Brave Bomber. And while we're talking about music, the Japanese version of the game had both lyrical intro theme and outro theme. That's not the music story we want to talk about. There is something much crazier. No joke, that is actual music that ended up in a version of the game. Basically what happened was Resident Evil released a new DualShock version of their director's cut and they wanted to amp up the soundtrack. So they hired an up and coming composer known as the modern day Beethoven who got his nickname because he was deaf. What a story. And a story it was because it turns out not only was he not deaf, but he didn't even write any of his own music. So for director's cut, he either turned in his own terrible music or his ghostwriter might have been playing a trick on him. Either way, the soundtrack became infamous and not for a good reason. It seriously sounds like he bought a sampler and just started hitting random buttons on it. And at this point, I think there's only one good way to end this segment, and that's with one of the best musical uses in the history of video games. D. 
Did you know there was a secret enemy in Resident Evil 1? It's called the Tick, and you've probably never seen it because it was exclusive to the Sega Saturn version of the game. For all intents and purposes, it's just a reskinned hunter. But the skin includes a red body with antenna and pincer claws that are more likely to, well, finish you. Sticking with the Saturn version, one of the surprises in the game is after you beat Tyrant in Chris's game, you think the game might be over, but you get surprised with a second Tyrant in the lab, Dagger. Have you ever heard of Resident Evil 1 Battle Game? Probably not because again it was part of that Saturn release. It's actually pretty cool and challenging as you take Chris or Jill through a fixed field of 12 stages featuring enemies and bosses from the game with a few surprises along the way. There's even a leaderboard, although winning does not unlock anything but mad props. We all saw what happened to Wesker in the real game. But in Saturn's battle game, Wesker is back from the dead as Zombie Wesker, a more powerful version of a traditional zombie. And one final secret enemy from the Saturn version? The final boss of battle mode, it's Gold Tyrant, which is just a cool looking more powerful tyrant made of gold. I love gold! While players in versions of the game can unlock the infinite rocket launcher and sometimes an infinite magnum for beating the game, there are two secret unlockable weapons that you'll only find in the PC version. For Chris, that weapon is a PC exclusive infinite machine gun IMI Uzi called the Mini Me. For Jill, it's a PC exclusive infinite Mac 10 called the Ingram. During the planning stages of Resident Evil, a few different items and techniques were cut, but their remnants are still found in the code. There are some random keys, a pile of wood, possibly for lighting fireplaces, a can of oil, possibly for burning bodies, and a pickaxe that many think would cut the chains on this famous door, or that I think may have been used to dislodge the boulders. There are even two items that actually work. There's a refill of flamethrower fluid, as well as dum dum rounds, which are a second more powerful ammo for the Magnum. Back in the 90s, there was a lot of parental uproar about video game content. There was a growing concern on Capitol Hill. These are not harmless toys. And the version of Resident Evil that we got in America was quite censored. So you probably missed out on things like color video, because I guess color makes it too scary, the gory parts of the intro, Kenneth's head falling off in the opening zombie scene, and of course the fact that Chris Redfield was a smoker. All this was found in Japanese versions. Are you smoking yet? A group of people get lost in a mansion filled with puzzles, notes, maps, enemies, inventory and health management, storylines, multiple endings, rage backtracking, lockpicks, lighters, and so much more. Sounds like Resident Evil. Well, actually, I'm talking about Sweet Home. Sweet Home was the Japanese Nintendo game that was the initial inspiration for Resident Evil. While Sweet Home is an RPG that was less zombie and more supernatural, the inspirations will literally hit you as soon as you walk in the familiar load screen front door and stick with you as it all comes crumbling down in the end. In a recent interview, the creator of Resident Evil said the game was initially supposed to be about ghosts and not zombies. Can you imagine? and the game was originally going to be first person. But a lack of technology and some inspiration from rival horror game Alone in the Dark helped push it into the third person pre-rendered fixed cameras that ended up in the game. And tank controls? Simply a workaround to get the game released. 
few years after release, Capcom decided to re-release a director's cut version of RE, and soon after that, a DualShock version to take advantage of controller technology. The main change in this version was a new advanced mode, which moved around some items and added some really cool new angles from the fixed camera perspective. Plus, there's another cool secret. You can actually put bullet holes in the screen in certain locations. In 2006, 10 years after the original game came out, something happened that I had no idea about. Resident Evil was ported to the Nintendo DS under the name Deadly Silence. Get it? DS Deadly Silence. This new version featured a few changes, including a new rebirth mode that included first person knife battles, auto equipped knife, and puzzles that take advantage of the DS's stylus and dual touch screen, among other things. A few years after the original game came out, Capcom planned to release a version of RE1 on the Game Boy Color? But after a variety of problems that anybody probably could have seen, they ended up scrapping the game. However, a few prototypes of the game were eventually found. So if you want, you can check them out. Before the game came out, there was also a demo or trial version, and in that version, there was actually a bloody message written on the wall that was later removed from the real game. And hidden in the files is a skin for Chris Redfield, and you can see he has a tattoo of Mega Man. One of the cool parts about Resident Evil was there were multiple endings depending on how many characters you saved. In the good endings, the mansion blows up, and in the bad ones, Tyrant roams the streets. Between the two characters, there are seven different combinations, and each one has its own live action ending. And the people who played these characters, that's a whole nother video. You did a really good job. Jill! Sorry for making you wait. Chris! In Chris's version of the game, there seems to be a little connection between Chris and Jill. However, as we know going forward in the series, nothing ever happens, and we think Jill has Chris friend-zoned. So that's a whole lot of secrets, easter eggs, and stories from Resident Evil 1 Original. Did you know about all of these? Did we miss anything important? Let me know in the comments that, and if you want us to continue this series with RE2. I'm Where's Barry, and don't forget to like and subscribe! Bye, Amanda.